The wind rustled through the towering ferns that blanketed the forest valley on Tarkon Prime's third moon. Sergeant Major Jenkins surveyed the terrain from the hatch of his mammoth-class tank, Oathkeeper. His laser-scarred armor glinted dully in the fading light. Twenty tanks from the 11th armor sat concealed on the low ridges above the valley. Jenkins had ordered them into dispersed, skirmish positions during the morning, optimizing fields of fire while retaining maneuverability. Now he wanted to check their preparations one last time before nightfall. Multiple sensor alarms blared as he swung his observation scope toward the eastern hills. Two plumes of spores billowed up where troop ships were discharging loads of biological pods. All stations, we've got inbound contacts. Two pods apiece, looks like light infantry. Below, Gunner Sergeant Chen manned Oathkeeper's primary 120mm mass driver cannon and coaxial machine guns. He rotated the turret slowly back and forth, peering through enhanced thermals as scouting parties emerged from the pods. The aliens resembled bipedal insects in powered exoskeletons. Jagged blades jutted from their forelimbs, and they carried bulbous projectile launchers on harnesses. Their olfactory sensors swept the forest as they advanced in pairs down game trails. Chen murmured assessments over the intertank push. First sighting confirms light scouts. No heavy armor signatures detected yet, sir. Jenkins nodded acknowledgement as a second wave of pods impacted nearby, disgorging more insectoid aliens. Their movements became more organized and spread out. As dusk fell like a shroud over the towering ferns, Jenkins pinged the company. All stations sound off. Over. Cool professional status reports flooded his headset as commanders verified defensive preparations were complete. A trickle of sensor alerts warned of additional troop ships entering the atmosphere. Jenkins flicked a switch. Night vision and low-light optics online. Look sharp out there, people. These bugs will swarm under cover of dark. Moments later, a brilliant flash lit the eastern valley as a swarm ship deposited its load in a single explosive burst. Dozens of burning biomatter pods rained down. From the pods boiled forth a tide of aliens much larger and more heavily armored than the scouts. Jagged carapace panels encased wicked amalgam cannon and plasma projectors. These were troop carriers, hauling squads of insectoid soldiers in bio-organic pods on their six articulated legs. Jenkins counted over a hundred of the alien walkers emerging in methodical lines from the impact craters. Their formation stretched over a kilometer, advancing in eerie lockstep across the mossy flats toward the river. He paused, letting them move further into the kill zone, then snarled, all stations, engage hostiles. Chen triggered the mass driver with a grin. Its hypervelocity slug punched clean through the first carrier's forward shields in a dazzling explosion. Simultaneous impacts rippled outward along the human line as other tanks opened up. The valley echoed with rolling cannon fire and detonations that backlit the ferns in hellish oranges. Insectoid senses detected the incoming barrage. Survivors scattered, disgorging squads of infantry which scuttled to cover amid the tree roots. Their plasma projectors and metal-jacketed slugs answered with volleys of fiery death toward the embankments. Shields flared and cracked under the impacts across the company. Jenkins roared, Second platoon, pull back and flank left. Draw their concentration. Three tanks rumbled into motion, triggering further salvos to track them as they circled around the enemy formation. As they maneuvers, Jenkins ordered precision volleys from the remaining tanks raining down on exposed troop carriers from their concealed positions. The action had degraded into a brutal close-quarters brawl for control of the valley under the green-tinted night vision displays. Shells and plasma traded back and forth in rapid staccato, lighting the trees with each blow that found home on organic or mechanical flesh. 
The night battle raged across the mist-shrouded valley. Sergeant Major Jenkins snarled encouragement to his tanks over the wireless. Thanks to focused precision fires directed from Oath Keeper's commander's cupola, the Xenos' initial momentum had stalled. Now it was time to press the advantage. Second platoon, nail those flanks. Others target carriers and squatters by numbers. Concentrate suppressing volleys. Fresh waves of mass driver slugs and plasma projectiles ripped into the alien ranks with mechanical fury. Under the violence of the coordinated human counterattack, cracks began to appear in the alien battle line. Scattered skirmishers lost cohesion as their troop carriers were reduced to shredded hulks. Yet Xeno resilience was formidable, and they strove to envelop Jenkins' defenders despite horrific losses. Through his gun sights, Chen observed masses of the insectoid aliens pouring more fire at Oath Keeper's shields. Their munitions ricocheted off as he blazed back, then pinged, Sir, frontal carriers attempting to override shields with synchronized barrage. Jenkins nodded grimly. Reroute auxiliary power, raise a temp barrier, then charge and ram on my mark. As shield grids flared, Oath Keeper's 70-ton bulk swung into motion with a lurch. Tanks' engines burned hot, roaring down the gentle slope straight at the alien formation. Jenkins crowed, For earth and armor! Through the external speakers, and Chen triggered the mass driver continuously. Shells turned carriers and grunts alike into twitching biomasses smeared across ferns. The moment before impact, Jenkins shouted, Brace! His gunners locked down stations just as Oath Keeper's prow collided with the Xeno lines at 100 kph. Exoskeletons, armor, and flesh were pulped under multiton treads in an orgy of gore. But one massive carrier had maneuvered aside at the last instant, lashing out with monomolecular bladed limbs. They scraped sparks across the tank's flanks as Oath Keeper careened onwards through the alien ranks. Jenkins winced at damage reports but roared, About face! Chen! Main gun forward arc only! Hose it down! A continuous hurricane of shell fire engulfed the monstrous Xeno in its death throes. The pre-dawn forest was a scene of utter devastation. Smoldering biomatter and shredded chitin littered the mossy earth, testament to the humans' vigil and the Xenos' failure to secure the valley before sunrise. Despite casualties to three-quarters of his original force, Sergeant Major Jenkins rallied his remaining tanks with a roar over the command circuit. Break and track, people! Second and third platoons, Outrider and Arrowhead! We're pushing them back to the river! Oathkeeper ground forward at the vanguard, mass driver spinning up for another barrage. On infrared, Jenkins saw the remnants of the Xeno force retreating hurriedly eastward. They abandoned wrecked carriers and the biomass of dead comrades, only bent on escaping through any means. Plasma projectiles continued arcing back desperately from the fleeing aliens. One punch threw a Thunder Tank's rear armor, igniting its engines in a fuel-air explosion that shook the forest. But most shots went wide in the Xenos' panic. The human tanks closed like hounds on a hunt. As Chen snapped gun camera stills of 2nd Platoon methodically dissecting a tight-knit Xeno squad with shells, Jenkins exalted, Nearly there! We have them broken just a little more! Emerging from the tree line into clearer ground, they beheld the river, and on its far bank, the last transport pods primed for liftoff. With a howl of abused engines, the aliens bounded the last hundred meters en masse. Their misshapen forms scrabbled and jostled madly to clamber up ramps into the swaying pods before blastoff. Some were crushed underfoot in the desperation but many made it aboard before the thunderous roar of ignition shook dust from the cliffs. Pod thrusters blossomed with fury as the alien ship strained skyward. Let them have it before they escape Atmo, Jenkins scream commanded. His tankers opened up with everything they had left. 
Mass drivers hammered the pods as they climbed, detonating thrusters and rending gaps in weakened hulls. Within moments, the sky was alight with secondary explosions and the crackling discharge of downed ships breaking apart. Chunks of biomass rained down upon the valley like ghastly confetti. The last thing Sergeant Major Jenkins saw through Oath Keeper's scopes was three crippled pods spiraling out of control, consumed by atmospheric friction. Then his screens cleared to the morning sun glinting on the river. It was over. The Xeno threat in the valley had ended, though at great cost to defense. Victory, Jenkins rumbled simply to his battered crew. Their oaths were kept once more.